and we are at the station of AirPick S1. Let me introduce you to Aldin Nodia, product manager of this device. Hi, thank you, Hugo. Um, so this is the AirPick S1. This is Sony's very first foray into the uh, commercial uh, professional drone market. And what's really unique about the APK S1 is that the smallest drone that can actually carry a full frame uh, payload. And what we have on the APK over here is our Alpha series cameras, which has a, uh, we have a variety of those, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but the main things that make the APK really unique is its high speed performance. Uh, it is extremely fast. It can fly in very uh, high winds, um, but also a lot of maneuverability. So it can get in and out of uh, shots specifically. In addition to that, you can use a single operator to fly the drone as a pilot, as well as operate the camera. Uh, you could use a dual operation, which means you can have a pilot and a camera operator. So for those little bit more uh, uh, focus shots or uh, more specific angles that you want to capture. And then it has a host of other really great uh, features. Uh, for instance, uh, collision avoidance, or being able to uh, map out its surroundings with multiple cameras, uh, two front facing, on either side, two, two facing back, facing down. So it really knows where it is in its environment. Um, in this configuration, we have it with the uh, Graham Z4 uh, AP S1 gimbal. Uh, and what I'd like to do is now move over and show you the type of cameras and lenses that we can actually fly on the AP S1. So we're over at the Alpha counter now, and I have a couple of cameras here I want to talk about and uh, tell you why they actually are suited for the AP S1 um, and in the different configurations. So behind me, I've got the Alpha 7S III, also have the Alpha 1. On the other side, we have the FX3. Um, they're all approximately the same size, but they all have really different uh, uh, feature sets that different photographers or cinematographers, filmmakers, or even doing survey could use. So for instance, on the Alpha 1, which is our flagship Alpha camera, it, it can shoot up to 8K, 2430p. Of course, we can do uh, 120p, uh, all intra uh, XAVC SI uh, with native uh, 4K uh, as well as uh, 50 megapixel still photos. So this is not only just for cinematography, but it's also for still photography. For those folks looking at even higher resolution, we have the R series, which is the Alpha 7 R Mark IV is our latest iteration. That's up to 61 megapixels. So for instance, if you're going to survey a bridge or a tower, instead of having a small drone taking several lower resolution images with smaller uh, drones, and then having to stitch those together, if you go out and take a single image in 16-bit uncompressed RAW at 61 megapixels, your time up in the air is reduced, and you get much higher resolution and much greater detail than you would out of multiple images. The 7S, for instance, and also the FX3, those are known for sensitivity. Now, the FX3 is pretty much the same as the 7S3, uh, with the difference of having a built-in fan, a smaller, more compact body that has got its own, uh, essentially, exoskeleton. It's, it's almost like the cage is built in. So they both have the same performances as, uh, in terms of video performance. Uh, so you could use either one of those on the uh, S3. That's fantastic for low light type of shots, also for high frame rates, up to 120 frames per second. Um, obviously, you have all the frame rates in between, as well as different codecs. So from XAVCS, XAVCHS, which is the H.265 uh, co uh, codec, as well as the uh, all intra XAVCSI. So multiple different options in terms of cameras, as well as lenses. We have over 66 lenses in our lineup as of now. Um, most notably, we have these set of G series lenses, and these are phenomenal quality lenses. We have a 24, a 40, and a 50 F2.5. They're all exactly the same size. The smaller and lighter your payload, the longer you can fly, the more maneuverability you have. So these are perfectly paired for the Airpeak S1 with our Alpha cameras. So while we're here at the Alpha counter, I want to talk about a couple of different configurations that we have. We're only showing uh, three of our cameras. Obviously, we have multiple in the lineup, but we're showing the Alpha 1, which has 8K recording and high resolution. So high resolution stills and high re resolution video. 50 megapixels still 8K recording. In addition to that, the Alpha 7S, that's got high sensitivity 
and high frame rates, up to 120 frames per second for uh, slow motion recording, uh, but also very high sensitivity up to uh, 490,000 ISO, as well as the new Alpha 7 Mark IV, which is our entry level uh, into the full frame series. Unique thing with the Alpha 7 Mark IV is we're showing it in this configuration with the new Xperia Pro I. Now the Xperia Pro I is our smartphone with the one inch size sensor, but also we can connect it up to the uh, uh, Alpha 7 Mark IV via USB-C. And because the Xperia lineup, the one series and the pro series has a six and a half inch 4K HDR OLED display with 120 Hertz refresh rate which is incredible because you don't get that in, exter in small uh, external monitors. So in this configuration, we can utilize it with USB-C uh, into the Xperia Pro I for, uh, from, the, from a, U U a USB UVC UAC compatible device. Um, when we look at the Alpha 1 and the Alpha 7S Mark III, we're showing it here with the Xperia Pro. Now Xperia Pro is slightly different. It has the same uh, LCD, uh, sorry, same OLED display, but it has an HDMI input. And the benefit here is not only, not only can we use it as an external monitor, but it also has 5G. So the three main uses is external 4K OLED display, uh, 5G for live streaming up to wherever you want to go to, as well as uh, a, a high speed uh, transfer for uh, any of your files that you have on your camera, with you, wherever you need to send them. If you have high-speed connectivities, uh, 5G millimeter wave or sub-6, this is the device that you need.